Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Did you know that 4K Blu-ray sucks? And why am I saying that? I am a massive collector of 4K Blu-ray. Why am I saying it sucks? Well, it's part of this series I'm doing at the moment, playing devil's advocate of sorts. Now, a lot of people understood in the first video what I was trying to do when I did Blu-ray sucks. Some of you didn't and just instantly hit that dislike button. But hey, if you don't understand what I'm trying to do, that's fine. But I'm playing a devil's advocate of sorts. Why does the format suck? Where does it fit? Now with Blu-ray, I was trying to hint that Blu-ray is kind of the middle child of collecting at the moment. It's not the low end like DVD is. It's not the high end like 4K is. It's in that weird spot where it's kind of like, not a lot of people are gonna pick it up over a 4K if they're a high end collector. Or if people just wanna get in cheap, it's still at high enough a price that it puts off collectors of DVD. So that was, that was the point of the first video. And the second video is going to be about why 4K sucks. And let's jump right in because, I mean, if people are just going to come on here and hit the dislike button, I don't really care. <laughs> but we're going to talk about it. So 4K Blu-ray. I'm a big collector of it. So why am I, of all people, saying that 4K Blu-ray sucks? Well, let's start with the cost. You're paying about three, sometimes four or five times more than a standard Blu-ray for the 4K option. Just for that little upkick in resolution. And yes, while most of these scans are coming from a native scan, they're going back, rescanning negatives at 4K, most studios are getting it right. Most studios are upscaling properly and not upscaling, but scanning in native 4K. Most companies are doing it right. But a lot of things, it's kind of like a minefield. I saw a comment on the last video where it was, it's kind of a minefield with 4K. It's kind of like revisionist history. Directors are just going back saying, oh, well, now that we have the 4K scan, we can go back and just edit the whole movie again. You see kind of the color grade changes with Terminator. You see kind of, I mean, Lord of the Rings kind of got it really badly wrong because I think the cinematographer had since passed away and then, you know, Peter Jackson went back and said, oh, cool, now I can just edit everything myself. But that's the thing. When someone is given full control over that movie, it kind of ruins the aspect of collaboration and having multiple people and multiple people in that, the cinematographers and so on, saying, this doesn't work, let's do it this way, or the hard work of so many people. When it's just one director saying, oh, it's my movie, I can do whatever I want with it, it is a minefield. And 4K is the biggest minefield of all at the moment, because you might get a 2001 A Space Odyssey, you might even get an Interstellar where it's really well transferred, really well put on that disc, suits it well. But there's sometimes where you'll get something that's kind of like waxiness, which DNR is digital noise reduction, has been done to death on some Blu-rays. So that's part one of why, why uh, 4K Blu-ray sucks. Secondly, I want to talk about discs and the sizes they come on. Now, a lot of people this generation with 4K are aware there are two major camps. I mean, you have 50 gigabyte discs in there well, as well, but the main two that get, studios tend to use are 66 gigabytes, and 100 gigabytes. Now, a lot of niche, niche labels, like your, I think Criterion use 66 gigs, but like Arrow, I believe, use 100 gig discs. So it's like, it's hit and miss. And what that means is that while you're upgrading for the premium experience of 4K, you're getting still a level of compression. And no matter what you get, you're still gonna get a level of compression. I mean, we're talking petabytes of data for some movies you're not gonna be able to fit that on a physical media format. And even a hard drive, you wouldn't be able to fit it on. In its raw form, if you were scanning like an IMAX movie in its raw form, that's gonna take petabytes of space. So you have to look at that as, okay, well, this is the next best thing, but they compress it down. Anything is compression. What does it look like on a modern TV? Most people, when they pick up a 4K Blu-ray, aren't gonna think, okay, um, is it a 66 gig disc or a 100 gig disc? Not even I think of that. I mean, people were talking about my Terminator review some of the comments were saying, is it a 100 gigabyte disc or a 66 gigabyte disc? We need to know. And I was just like, I don't really care. It looks great to me. Like, I don't care. <laughs> but this idea that studios will still cut corners like that. And yes, I know there's less compression on the 100 gigabyte disc. There's still compression, but there's less of it than the 66 gig disc. I understand why people would want that. So that is important information. And that's another reason why 
it sucks because in the Blu-ray era, we still had conversations like that about, oh, has the transfer been done right? Has all this been done right? But I wasn't sitting there analyzing the actual disc itself saying, how big is the disc? I need to know because I need to know if it's compressed more or compressed less. I need to know. Instead of just watching the film and saying, yeah, that was actually pretty good. It looked good for what I got. So 4K has become kind of snobby about that. And it's kind of hilarious that 4K has become the high end format. And get it, I get it. We're paying more for that format. So studios should really use less compression. But at the end of the day, it's all compressed. 100 gigabytes is still compressed. They could put it on 500 gigabyte hard drives and it'll still be compressed. So, you know, it's compressed either way you look at it. So you have to look at it as, what are you getting with 4K? You're paying the higher premium. And a lot of the times, upscaling is just as good. I could take a Blu-ray, like a new, uh, new South Park Blu-ray that came in. I could take this, put it on my Blu-ray player, and upscale it up to 4K if I wanted to, and it would just look as good as anything else. Because modern players get it right. Modern players have figured out that upscaling is about analyzing what's there, and not about guessing the information, but analyzing what's there and trying to complement what's there, rather than guessing information and putting stuff there that doesn't belong, and waxiness, let's do DNR. So a lot of older Blu-rays tend to upscale really well. And that's one thing I didn't mention in my Blu-ray video, that Blu-ray does have a collector market because it upscales so well. I mean, I looked at the stats of how much DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K are on. Uh, DVD is still the big leader in terms of physical media, in terms of visual media. That is on about 45% uh, market share, which that's insane. Like if you think about collectors, you wouldn't think, oh, DVD is still the king. Why is it still the king? Because it's cheap. It's the low end format. A lot of people pick up a DVD because it's like, oh, I can have all of Mr. Bean and I just want to, because streaming is not always online. Sometimes the internet goes down. I want that there to complement it. Most people are not comfortable going out paying 40, 50, 60 dollars for one of their favorite movies when they can just stream it. So, you know, you have to look at that as why DVD is still king. Then you look at Blu-ray. Blu-ray is about 30% market share around that I may be a bit off here and there, but it's around 30%. Now, when I was talking about Blu-ray, I was talking about that market share has been going down while 4K has been going up. And I've been following it over time. I remember when UHD was at 6% of the market and Blu-ray was at about 36, 40%. And, you know, DVD was way up. That was like 50%, 60%. So I remember the market back a couple of years ago. And you've watched Blu-ray drop off its high horse go down the middle ground and be like 30% now. And UHD has picked up 15%. So, you know, there that is factual. I did look at that in the first video. But what I didn't mention in the first video is that while Blu-ray goes down, the second-hand market that isn't tracked with all these stats, like your CEX, your J, not JB Hi-Fi, but like your second-hand shops, your Facebook marketplace, they are picking up steam and they're not going to track those. So Blu-ray does have a big collector market. And most people are just happy with this lower cost. So what I was touching on is why would you go and buy an uh, upgrade price for um, 4K when the Blu-ray just looks just as good? And in 9 times out of 10, it actually looks better than the 4K because of the transfers being done are revisionist history. They're going back editing stuff out. They're going back change of color grades. You know, you don't know with the minefield of 4K what you're actually going to get. And that's why so many of us rely and wait for 4K reviews. When I did my Terminator review, so many of you just waited and were like, oh, well, is that what it's like? Is it good? And I was like, yeah, you know, I could see some DNR being done, but some people were saying, that's not DNR. That's, um, that's just how it looked. It was always naturally flat. But to me, it looked great. Like there was still color grain remove, uh, color grade, not color grade changes, but like grain removal. There was still a aspect of grain removal in that film. So I look at it like that, but why does 4K suck overall? because it's fighting streaming. Instead of realizing what it actually is, it's trying to say, Will, you come and get us because we are a higher bit rate. We are doing this, we're doing that, we're doing this and doing that. Instead of becoming the niche thing of like, you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna do something different. We're not gonna compete with streaming. I mean, you get some who get it. Like the experience of it is part of everything. Like look at this Desperado box set. Steelbook, nice little steelbook. Arrow get it right. They understand, yeah, okay, we're not going to, we can charge more, but we'll make it an experience. 
But, you know, most standard releases will just be like, oh, well, here's the movie and we'll put a Blu-ray in there. Like I took this one off the shelf last time. You know, we'll put a Blu-ray in there. We'll put a UHD in there and everything will be dandy. They'll have both choices and yeah, okay. You know, 4K used to be an experience and Blu-ray used to be an experience too. When you pick it up, it will be the highest picture quality. It didn't get the experience of DVD, right? DVD had more thought out menus, but it's... It comes close, is what I'll say. It comes really, really close in terms of high, higher things. The trade-offs are worth it. But not everything's ported across from DVD. And not, likewise, not everything's ported across from VHS or LaserDisc or so on. There are still things missing from catalogs, which is why DVD is still king. Because people can't get certain movies on Blu-ray. People can't get certain movies on 4K. Look at Dangerous Minds, for example. One of the best Michelle Pfeiffer movies. As far as I know, that is not available on Blu-ray in Australia. And it might be available in the US, but it's not available in Australia. And that's something that I'm like, okay, why would that not get a transfer? I was stoked when I saw Deep Cover come out from, I believe it was Criterion. Great movie, great Lawrence Fishburne movie. But I was stoked when that came out. I was like, yeah, okay, this is, I need to have that. That's a cool movie to have on Blu-ray. But so many studios are now like, oh, well, DVD was good enough and they can't obtain the rights for whatever reason. And likewise, it's always like, oh, but, you know, we're going to have to go back and scan the negative and it's, kind of, it's pricey. 4K is pricey. To scan something and give it a, a uh, Dolby Vision overhaul or even a HDR10 overhaul. I was talking about the movie I worked on, Last Cab to Darwin. Like, I can't get it off the shelf here because it's really jammed in there. I'll leave it there. I can't, it's, I've jammed it in really tightly. But Last Cab to Darwin, I'm aware that, you know, to transfer something like that and give it the HDR10 and Dolby Vision treatment, that might be a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollar process. And the pickup rate of that is like, what? May It may sell 50,000 copies. It may even sell less, you know? It could sell a hundred thousand. Who knows? I don't think everyone's running out of their way to get Last Cab to Darwin. Now, if they did it with the castle, I could see a mass up the rate of the castle. But I can't see people running out saying, I must buy Last Cab to Darwin. Especially because, and this is another thing with 4K. A lot of the hard media that was there, the negatives, as it was shot in the camera, was 2K. And even tops out at lower resolutions. Like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre topped out. 16mm topped out about 2K. Last Cab to Darwin was shot on 2K, you know, that was something that tops out at a certain resolution. And upscaling it to 4K, yeah, it'll offer some benefits, but it's still 2K. You're guessing information at that point. So a lot of things have, outside of like the Nolan movie shot on IMAX, 35mm can still offer some benefits. I mean, I, think, I don't think that's topped out yet. It might top out at 8K or 6K. But we're getting to that point now where resolution is really starting to top out in these formats. And I think that's something worth analyzing. I am playing devil's advocate in this video saying 4K Blu-ray sucks, but in my view, yes, it's great for a collector's format. It's great for a projector. You can blow it up to big sizes. But as some comments said in my last video, it's a minefield and people just prefer to stick with DVD and Blu-ray because it's such a minefield. You don't know what the director's gonna do. You don't know if James Cameron's gonna go back and say, yeah, you know, I kind of wanted I kind of wanted this to look like that, but I could have I could have done a different color change back in color grade change back in the day. I just have to do it now. It's like putting a rock in front of R2D2, you know? Ah, oh, you know, I hadn't thought back in the 80s to put a rock in front of R2D2. It's like that could have been done with practical effects on the set of Star Wars, Lucas. So yeah. I don't know if this is going to get as much dislikes as my other video. I don't actually care if people dislike the video because most, most of my fans understand what I'm trying to do. I'm playing devil's advocate and 4K Blu-ray does suck. If you look at it overall, it sucks. It sucks to collect because it's expensive. It's great in terms of picture quality, but it sucks because it's a minefield and you don't know what you're getting half the time until you buy it and then it's like, oh, okay, Cameron's dnr this to death or no one did a really good transfer or 2001 was great. But that one, that other thing sucked. You know, there's so many things where it's like, you don't know what you're getting. And so that's a minefield to deal with. It sucks because of that. It's great because, yeah, it's the new format. It's going to look great. Don't get me wrong. Dolby, Atmos on most of these discs are freaking amazing. But then here's another aspect. A lot of Blu-rays and even 4Ks don't transfer the mono track. The original 
the original theatrical audio, let alone the theatrical version like Star Wars. That We don't even get that on Blu-ray. Or even, I mean, we've got it on DVD as like Laserdisc transfers. But a lot of them won't include the audio. Like one thing that most people were stoked about when, uh, where is it? Nightmare on Elm Street. Where can I find Nightmare on Elm Street? Here it is. One of the first things people wondered about with Nightmare on Elm Street when I did my review on it was, is the cinema audio there? Is the original mono there? And I was looking for that as soon as I watched it and I was like, it's there? It's not perfect. I mean, there are still sounds missing, but it's close. It's very, very close. And that's why a lot of people still prefer their VHS tapes because that contains the original mono. There's people who prefer the Laserdisc version of Jurassic Park over the 4K transfers because DTS is there and DTS is the way it was played in cinemas. And that has not been transferred to a new format because it is very hard to transfer DTS for starters. It's an analog format and it will never truly transfer properly to 4K or anything. It's very hard to transfer that audio. That being said, it's the modern age. Can we at least get the theatrical mono track on a lot of these things. Now, some companies are getting it right now, but it's still not a blanket of everyone's getting it right. It's still sort of, what am I getting? I don't know if I'm getting the theatrical version. I don't know if they're going to replace all the gun sounds in this movie with walkie talkie sounds. People will get that joke. <laughs> but do you understand what I'm saying? 4K sucks for a reason. It's not bad, and I'm certainly not saying it's bad, I'm just saying it sucks because of what it's trying to do and what it's trying to be. Instead of trying to cater to the high-end community or even trying to compete with streaming, it should really say, you know what? Let's be the format that gets it right. Let's be the format that stops directors from altering their films. It could put its foot down and say, you know what? You alter the film, you're not putting it out. Very simple. And people will still find a way around it. But that's what I think. I think it could be the format that gets it right and corrects the mistakes of uh, of Blu-ray. I mean, when The Matrix came out on Blu-ray, it had that horrendous color grade, the green color grade. And with the 4K release, they actually went back and removed all that crap off it, you know? And it looks beautiful now. It looks as it was shown in cinemas. But anyway, guys, let me know. Am I just being an idiot for saying 4K sucks or am I actually justified? As I said, I am playing the Devil's Advocate. A lot of people didn't understand the first video when I did it, when I did Blu-ray sucks. But hey, if you want to go and watch that video, I'll put it over here and you can tell me if I was out of line with that one. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think. Catch you in the next one. Peace.